Remember the Maine. The loss of the battleship USS Maine on February 15, 1898 would be a catalyst for a series of events that would irrevocably change United States and world history. Yet many might not be aware of the history of this ship, its sailors, and its legacy. Here I'll present some background on the ship and finish with a few artifacts from inside the sea chest. USS Maine was designed to be a new modern warship, one to replace the old wooden and ironclad ships of the Civil War. Authorized in 1886, the keel was laid in 1888, but delays in getting steel and a fire burning the ship's original blueprints, as well as other setbacks, meant that the ship wasn't commissioned until 1895. Still, Maine was a jewel of the fleet. Photographers from the Detroit Publishing Company came on board in 1896 and took numerous photos of the crew and their living and working environments. Unlike the Army, the U.S. Navy always had integrated crews. USS Maine was no different and had an ethnically diverse group of sailors on board. In addition to Americans, there were personnel from Canada, China, the Philippines, Japan, Russia, and the United Kingdom. The crew also included 30 African-American sailors. One of these was Dick Turpin. Turpin enlisted in the Navy in 1896. He survived the explosion aboard USS Maine, and then went on to survive an explosion aboard another ship, USS Bennington, in 1905. By 1917, he rose to the rate of chief gunner's mate, and he was also a qualified master diver many years before Carl Brashear. In 1898, Cuba was a Spanish colony. For several decades, there had been active rebellion against Spanish rule, and this led to some heavy-handed governing by the Spanish. Thanks to the yellow journalism of the Hearst and Pulitzer newspapers, gross exaggerations of Spanish atrocities and Cuban deaths, Americans and the U.S. government were sympathetic to the Cuban cause. President William McKinley ordered USS Maine to Havana, Cuba on January 24, 1898 to protect American lives and interests during this time of the Cuban War of Independence. Maine's presence in Havana Harbor seemed to have a calming effect on both the Spanish and the Cubans. As there had been recent riots, Captain Sigsby, the commanding officer of the ship, did not allow his sailors ashore for liberty so as to keep them safe from any potential violence there. Thus, on the evening of February 15, 1898, three weeks into their stay, most of the crew were asleep in their hammocks in the forward part of the ship. At 9.40 p.m., over five tons of gunpowder in the magazines located directly beneath the sleeping sailors exploded. There were 355 Marines and sailors in the crew. Of these, 261 were killed in the explosion or died of their wounds. Of the 94 survivors counted in 1898, only 16 were uninjured. The cause of the explosion is still debated to this day. Many believe that a spontaneous fire in the coal bunkers adjacent to the powder magazine caused the explosion. The Navy's investigation suggested that an external explosive had caused the loss of the ship. This news and the newspapers fanning the flames of public opinion caused the public to cry for war. Remember the Maine, to hell with Spain, became the battle cry. Believing that the Spanish had caused the loss of the ship, America went to war with Spain. In a brief and lopsided victory over the Spanish, America seized their possessions, Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and entered the stage as a global power. Those who died in Maine's explosion were initially buried in Cuba. The funeral for the first 19 was held on February 17, 1898, in Cristobal Colon Cemetery in Havana. 
In December 1899, the bodies of 150 Maine crewmen were disinterred and taken back to the United States and reinterred at Arlington National Cemetery. In 1910, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers began the process of raising the Maine. In the process, they recovered 66 additional bodies from the wreck. These remains were brought home. In March 1912, Sailors from USS North Carolina came ashore and retrieved the remains, many of which were unknown, from the Maine sailors. They brought them aboard ship and sailed for the Washington Navy Yard. If you take a look at the building I've identified here, this building is now the National Museum of the United States Navy. The fallen Marines and sailors were given a funeral service and then escorted to Arlington National Cemetery to rest with their shipmates. Once the wreck of USS Maine had been raised, the mainmast was removed. The rest of the ship was towed out to sea and scuttled with dignified honors, but that mainmast was transported to Arlington National Cemetery. A huge number of artifacts from the ship would become parts of public monuments and memorials. This mass became the key component to the USS Maine Memorial in Section 24 of Arlington National Cemetery. The base of it is made to be reminiscent of the circular turrets that were on board the ship, and on the sides of this, the names of the fallen sailors and marines were listed. Attached to the entrance door of the Maine Memorial is half of the ship's bell. The memorial looks down over the remains of 230 of the ship's crew. Most of these individuals are listed as unknown. Even more tragic, many of these graves contain the remains of more than one person. You'll see many of these headstones that say two unknown, three unknown, four unknown. This meant that only partial remains were recovered of these individuals and they were grouped together. Other remnants of USS Maine are scattered throughout the country. The foremost of the ship is actually at the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis. At the Washington Navy Yard, one of the guns of USS Maine was on display and was exposed to the element for decades. So a few years ago, it was sent off for conservation. It's been cleaned up. It's in fantastic shape, but I don't think they're going to put it outside again. Also at the Washington Navy Yard, just across from the Navy Museum, is a blade from the spare propeller recovered from USS Maine. Since I was at the Navy Yard the other day, I stopped by, took a selfie with it. I have a couple of things related to USS Maine in the sea chest. Here we have a couple of stereoscope cards. Now you see that there's dual images here. If you were to look very closely at the edges of these photographs, you'd see that they're not identical. These were taken by a dual camera, and each lens was set slightly different from the other. The end result would be to mount these photos on a card, and they would be set into a device called a stereoscope. Different versions had been around for a few years, but in 1861, Oliver Wendell Holmes actually invented but did not patent this particular style of stereoscope. What you do is place the card in a holder, and you can slide it forward or backward to adjust for your own vision. The net effect of this, because the two photographs are from different angles, is it creates a three-dimensional image. It's absolutely amazing to see this. Fortunately, I can't show it to you, but trust me, it does work. In all the hoopla after the loss of the main, all kinds of patriotic souvenirs came on the market. These two buttons, the right one of which has the famous cry, Remember the Maine, are common examples. At this time, several large food companies would sell mustard and other condiments in milk glass jars that had a particular design theme. Several companies did their own take on USS Maine, and these two examples are of the same pattern. Although the ship's design took a little bit of artistic license, it's clearly marked as being USS Maine. In 1998, the 100th anniversary of the destruction of USS Maine, the U.S. Postal Service issued a 32-cent stamp commemorating the ship. Here, once again, we're encouraged to remember the Maine 
and to remember its Marines and sailors who died in 1898. Check back soon for more content. Thanks for watching.